Welcome to Tony Talks. Welcome to Tony Talks. Welcome How's everybody doing today? This is Attorney Antonio Moore coming to you from Tony Talks here to have a discussion that ties in the realities of the Dallas Mavericks being tied to none other than Trump's top donor in 2020, the Adelson family of the Sands Corp, and how Mark Cuban, who has supposedly this billionaire liberal, which don't go make no sense, how he has basically tied himself to hard right Republican conservative politics by selling the team to the Adelson Sands Corp family that is Trump's number one donor, while at the same time currying favor from a lot of people that are supposedly liberal. And now don't nobody want to say nothing. Don't nobody want to tie it all together. Don't nobody want to actually make the case that this gambling, Mark Cuban, the NBA, they all are setting up what to me is like a Hunger Games-esque kind of situation, particularly for black folks, but for poor folks across this nation. Let's talk about it. So this is attorney Antonio Moore. And I'm and so this, you know, as I look at this thing, I have to frame it. So Mark Cuban, who owned the Mavericks, was never gonna sell it. He ended up selling it to a casino magnet. I want everybody to understand that when you get to that level, you can sell to probably a, a hundred different bidders if they you really put it out there that you're selling, but you choose who you sell to. In this case, and I'll show you as I go along, he sold to a casino family as he tries to get Texas to switch from non-gambling to gambling because he can't do it himself. He don't have the power. He is trying to tie into the political apparatus of Trump support, of far right, without having to say himself that he donated. But now you, in my view, donated through the money that you took in that came from supporting the right. So what's the difference? We look across and everybody from Roland Martin to so many others have had him on their shows, have championed him in tweets, have championed the man who is going to give us gambling, who now is tied in like this with the number one donor to Trump in 2020, a same donor that basically when Obama was running, put all their money against Obama on purpose. But you're going to champion Cuban because he going to say some words. But what about this, though? Okay. Let's talk about it. So those people that don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about this right here. We're going to get to that towards later in the show. He championed Cuban and made him into some kind of hero. And boom, Mark Cuban isn't playing with you. No ability to understand political nuance. He's a billionaire, even before the Adelson. But afterwards, what, what are we talking about, man? You, you don't want to offend him. You want to call Adolf's people Trump supporters that ain't mentioned nothing about no Trump because we're not Trump supporters. But you don't want to talk about this man. But you're talking about the family, but not this man who just took the money from the family to sell black folks gambling in particular, but poor folks at large. Can we talk? Mark Cuban selling majority stake in Dallas Mavericks to casino tycoons report. The sale to Las Vegas based billionaire Miriam Adelson and her family is reportedly worth three point five billion dollars. Mark Cuban don't need $3.5 billion. What he needs is that right wing, top donor to Trump, hard right supporting to the Senate all across this. You need that to get through this gambling. You need to be a far right billionaire all of a sudden. So the Dallas Mavericks that are in the NBA playoffs, that are in now the NBA finals, I, I should say, are owned by a Sands Corp in majority stake. I think it's like 70%, 70 plus. That is a casino family that was the number one supporters to Trump and the NBA want to give us some kind of Black Lives Matter on the court. Can I talk today? Can I tie it all together? how the NBA has become a, a platform for social justice. 
They damn sure didn't block this. This is like dominoes. So if they get Texas, then they're coming around the country and going to get everybody else. Mark Cuban's Mavericks sale brings more MAGA to the NBA. Billionaire Miriam, Miriam Adelson won't be the first MAGA-friendly owner in the NBA. They got other ones. The Devils family owns the Magic. You mean the Devils that gave us charters? That was the de head of the Department of Education? Yes, those people own the Magic and the several other teams. I don't know how you made heroes out of billionaires through the lens of Diddy and, and, and Jay-Z, but I will tell you today, you, your ass is poor. You fucking poor. You better figure out how to understand when people are playing you and, and hustling you on the idea of the lifestyles and the rich and famous and we all can access and, and all this kind of Everybody involved though now. I'll show you later. These are like silos. It's not the NBA pay everybody. As I understand it, these are separate corporations. And the corporations pay your checks. So now when this corporation pay Kyrie, it's going to come from Dallas. But they are owned by the Sands Corp, the, the casino family that was the number one uh, donor to Trump. And you got to figure out, can you take that money from the Sands Company, the Sands Corp, the, the, the gambling magnet? He going to take it. He already did. Mark Cuban looking to sell Dallas Mavericks to one of Trump's top donors for $3.5 billion. I wanted to slow this down and give my opinion. He didn't sell just for no $3.5 billion. He sold for their ability to leverage being the top donor to Trump. He sold for their ability to leverage all the other large-scale donations that they made to the far right. He sold to tie himself into the right wing. And that's my view. I'll show you in an article in a second where I'm not, I'm not guessing. This is the, this is what happened. Let's talk. Let's talk about it today. How many people want to talk today, this morning? about how people are quiet about this and trying to make one-step analysis about Adelson only. But what about Mark Cuban and what about the NBA? Oh, Roland don't want to talk about that because he don't want to offend the NBA. And he don't want to offend Mark Cuban, who he had on the show. He want to talk about Adolf's people because we don't have no wealth and we doing politics with shoestring and bubblegum, but you want to talk about us. Talk about this dude you had on the show, bro. So we got this stuff where... Black folks can't do politics because when we do politics, we get called Trumpers. But in reality, the guy who just sold his team to curry favor so he can get gambling inside of poor American homes, particularly black American homes, just sold to the top Trump donor and you and the people quiet. And the NBA is being celebrated in black homes today as we get ready for June 6th and the NBA finals. How about we pick it the Mavericks? And the NBA. I need you to see it. Mark Cuban explains why he sold his majority stake of the Dallas Mavericks. The NBA on Wednesday approved Cuban's sale of a controlling interest in the Mavericks to the Adelson and Dumont family who run the Las Vegas Sands Corp. Don't get it confused. The Adelson family. Dumont is the step the step uh, son that came in. He just managed the Adelson family, the ones that donated to the far right all across this country that were the top donor, $100 million to Trump in 2020. Mark Cuban sees a future of NBA ownership where the advantage will be in real estate. The high profile billionaire says that while he sold his majority stake in the Dallas Mavericks to a pair of families with strong ties to the hotel and casino industry, the advantages what you can what can you build and where you can to have somebody who's really good at that, Cuban said before the Mavs game. Patrick and Miriam, they're the best in the world at what they do, which is gambling. And you trying to get into gambling, which to me is exploitation, and particularly of black folks and particularly of black males. And everybody is involved, including Kyrie. Including Luca, because the checks come down the pipe. They got the Dallas Mavericks on their jersey. I want to talk today because we let people off the hook, the people that set the team up, because they are somebody that's doing diversity and inclusion. 
No, 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 no. This money come out of that gambling and that Trump support. But you don't have to take my word for it. Go read this article for yourself so you can know I'm not guessing and I don't miss. Mark Cuban's big wager on gambling in Texas faces long odds in the Texas Senate. Now, Roland might come back and say, I got a tweet where I talked about the Adelsons. We not talking about the Adelsons alone right now. We're talking about you having Mark Cuban on, making him the champion of your liberal ideas, making him some kind of pariah for po people, for, 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 for the left, when in actuality, this is Mark Cuban right here. Mark Cuban's big wager on gambling in Texas faces long odds in the Texas Senate. Can the Mavs new Las Vegas owners deep pockets overcome conservative Texas senators opposition to gambling? So in my view, he sells to the Adelsons, not for the money. You can get that anywhere and you don't need that much money. He didn't want to sell his team before. What he sold for is their ability to transition his team into a gambling uh, uh, arena and two legalizing gambling in Texas because they had put money in the hands of the right all along. They had put the most money into Trump's hands. So the guy that's been standing out talking about how he's so against Trump is now standing next to the people who made Trump. Less by six billion, uh, mind you, than the unfathomable deep pockets of Las Vegas casino magnet. Miriam Adelson with son-in-law Patrick Dumont. Adelson heads the group that built the Venetian, the Palazzo on the Vegas Strip. This week, the NBA Board of Governors unanimously. Okay, going back. So the Board of Governors that have been all about this social justice and this Black Lives Matter on the court approved the top donor to Trump, the one that was convicted recently, the president, that also is a casino magnet that's trying to bring gambling to Texas to own a team. And y'all going to celebrate this league and act like this is all okay. I need you to see it. It's a lot of, uh, of sensitive folks today. Adelson has the power to prompt Cuban to sell his beloved Mavs, but is her $33 billion empire and considerable influence with Republican lawmakers in Texas enough to bring legalized gambling to the Lone Star State. So they got people that are the far right that don't want to legalize the gambling in Texas, and they trying to pull them to do it. He can't do that. There's levels. There's levels to this wealthy whiteness. I want you to see it. 310-388-3499 if you want to speak today. I know I'm coming early, but... Feel free, because I want to have the discussion today. Can we talk about it? Can we have this discussion? And look at this. Look at the craziness in this attached Facebook post, and even the even crazier celebration. And I'll talk about that post about this weird bet somebody made. Got y'all your sons, y'all husbands, y'all fathers going crazy over this gambling. Black men are the most prone to do it. Poor people need it because they can't afford food and groceries. And now they're making crazy bets. I'll show you in a second. And the even crazier celebration of taking Nostradamus like long, wild shots. So the NBA, Dallas Mavericks, were sold by Mark Cuban to a casino magnet family, Sands Corp, that donated more to Trump in 2020 than any other single donor. What are people celebrating with the Dallas Mavericks ascendancy to the finals? Question mark. That team is also a key cog in accelerating NBA sports gambling in Texas and thus across the nation. You can see it right here. Right here. Look, let me go back because I, I, I didn't make one part clear. You see who's putting this medal on this lady? She got a medal. Of course, if you give the most money to me, I'm going to give you a medal. Adelson and her husband, the late Las Vegas mogul Sheldon Adelson, were the biggest donors to Trump's 2020 re-election campaign, giving nearly $100 million to a super PAC. Can we talk? 
but y'all gonna watch this NBA Finals and celebrate. The bet I was talking about is this. You got young black men that don't think right no more. Call it what you want. Sheesh, the Mavs gonna win? This man dang near made 100000 from a $50 bet. How about you go get you some groceries, some, some meat, some uh, uh, peas and some carrots? How about you spend that money on your family? This man had to have, he had to win. Look at this weird craziness. He had to bet almost probably a year ago that the, who was going to be in the, in the college championship, who was going to uh, uh, win the championship, who was going to be in the uh, exact Super Bowl, that the Dallas also were going to win the conference. He had to follow all that too. I'm telling you today. Many of you are already rewired, but some of you are being reprogrammed to not have a sane line of thinking when it comes to money. Basic understandings of a loaf of bread becoming a versus a magic beans. You using the money you need to eat on magic beans to call this a celebration that you got to follow this, let alone that you got to get all this right. How many people didn't get it right? Can we talk? How many millions of people didn't get it right and didn't get no groceries to eat? This is the article that the political wrote on Sheldon Adelson. Again, in the article, there are so many points. But what they say is, I'm just going to read a couple sections to you guys. And Sheldon Adelson, again, is the is the dead husband of, of Miriam Adelson. Can I talk? She is the dead husband of Miriam Adelson, and he built this Sands Corp. This Sands Corp that now owns the Dallas Mavericks that Cuban sold to so that he can get legalized gambling in Texas. And this ain't my opinion. This is has been written about. That's why, why else he don't need the money to me. You know, I don't know his personal issues or, or, or non-issues, but cash on hand, you don't need that much cash on hand. But if you can leverage that and grow the team where it is a stalwart of gambling in Texas through the Republican ties of Sheldon Adelson and of Miriam Adelson, while Le Roland will champion you as a liberal like superhero, largely uh, apolitical for decades, Adelson became a donor of colossal sums late in his life. His influence spread far and wide as he and his wife, Miriam, donated to campaigns and causes through assorted super PACs. In 2012, Adelson became the largest individual donor in American electoral history, injecting more than $100 million or $90 million into the presidential race in a failed effort to prevent Barack Obama from winning a second term to the right. And Roland now is... is not tying together that Mark Cuban tied himself to that. And not just Roland, nearly everybody. It's easy to talk about the Adelsons, but what about the NBA approving them owning a team? What about the fact that they donate the most to Trump and that now Mark Cuban is tied in, in with them so that he can leverage the relationships that they've been able to garner as a result? After the election, he gave $5 million to Trump's inaugural committee, another record set in some. And during the 2020 campaign cycle, the Adelsons gave $50 million to the Congressional Leadership Fund, the top house GOP super PAC, and $70 million to the Senate Leadership Fund. That is what allows for you to create leverage where you can ask the far right to make gambling legal in Texas. Mark needed access to that, in my view. And this sale is him getting, so it is a political move. And the NBA and their board of governors approves the sale. We talk about the amount, but we never really make clear, other than these local papers, what really was sold. Mark Cuban's big wager on gambling in Texas faces long odds in the Texas Senate. Reading it again. 
Can the mass new Las Vegas owners deep pockets overcome conservative Texas senators opposition to gambling? When they say deep pockets, they're not just talking about how much they're worth. They're talking also about how much they donated to the far right. I want to talk. Marx, this is the ignorance of what's going on. And I was going to do this show just as a straight recorded video, but I wanted you guys to get this live. Marx sold the team ownership to this casino family to help spur sports gambling in Texas. He has always wanted to build, can we talk, a new stadium in a casino for the team, but he couldn't. Because it's not legal in Texas. And even the Republicans don't want to legalize it in Texas. He sold the team so that they, the, the people he's selling to can leverage the power and relationship that they got from donating to Republicans to make that dream real. How do you not know that and you're in my thread talking to me? I'm a lawyer, are you? But don't get it twisted. There isn't anything else the Mavericks have to do with this Repu family's Republican ties. They're owned by them. They have everything to do with them. I don't understand how you guys are going to reconcile this, but you better figure it out because right now your identity is a conflict. It is a conflict between your understanding of sports when I told you it was a decadent veil and the reality that sports is becoming a sports gambling uh, a place where you go and bet your money away. I want to talk. My reply is that is everything. What are you even saying? It's like circular stupidity. The reason Cuban sold to the family is to transition into gambling and legalize it in Texas through their donor and Republican Party relationships, meaning part of the purchasing price was them being the top donors to Trump and also other senators and the sway that came with it. This lost person literally said there isn't anything else, meaning tying the matter. That's everything. It makes the Mavericks Republican by virtue of their owners. I want to see it. I don't understand how nobody's talking about this. They're talking about the little, the edges. Because that's the easy part. You know, you brought them on the show, Roland. Exclusive. Mark Cuban tells, calls Trump snake oil salesperson praises Biden. So I'm going to read this in a second. But before I read this, but he sold the team to the people that get medals from Trump so that he can leverage the medal and, and the relationships to get the gambling in Texas. So are you really calling him these things at all? Hmm. Exclusive, Mark Cuban calls Trump snake oil salesperson, praises Biden. The endorsement from one of America's most high profile businessmen comes at a, as the 81 year old president struggles in the polls. This is what Cuban's supposedly told Axios I don't want a snake oil salesperson as president. I'm voting for Biden Harris over Trump all day. But the Adamson's not. And, and at that level, we don't want to know about your singular vote. We want to know how your money flows. And right now, you are now tied in with the top donor to Trump in 2020 in America. And really tied to them for their political sway with Republicans that comes out of their donation to Republicans. So I don't understand how... Axios asked you that question instead of asking you, well, then why did you sell to the Allisons? I don't understand how Roland had you on and asked you all kind of questions instead of digging in, or maybe you need to now, if he if his own argument I was before, always been the decadent veil. This is a whole crazy game being played. Can we talk? I'm not going to keep you long. Mark Cuban calls Trump snake oil salesperson praises Biden. Mark Cuban looking to sell Dallas Mavericks to one of Trump's top donors for $3.5 billion. Okay. 
And again, these are silos. So the checks that people receive, the GM and everybody, they get checks now that come to through the Dallas Maverick name, but it's under the Sands Corp. The Sands Corp that donates in large to the right. I just want to talk for a second. We're not going to stay long. We're going to stay short. But I just need to ask the question. Did we make superheroes out of what used to be? They look old now, older, old, really. Young white billionaires that were always billionaires and trying to get their own tax cuts. Can we talk? Mark Cuban defends Biden, bashes Trump on the economy. Billionaire investor and television personality Mark Cuban defended the state of the economy under Biden and bashed former President Trump on Friday. Okay. Billionaire Miriam Adelson, the same Miriam Adelson that he sold the team to, that Mark Cuban sold the team to, because I don't want you to get lost. I want you to hear it. This is her getting a medal. So we have Mark Cuban saying that he don't support that he support Biden and bashing Trump, but then the person who go who gonna make him a lot of money is heavily tied to the right, in particular donated the most to President Trump. Billionaire Miriam Adelson plans to give millions to help Trump. Adelson withheld financial support during Republican primary. Billionaire and late husband gave nearly a hundred million dollars to Trump. In 2020, and this is about the 2024 election, Adelson plans to donate millions to Preserve America, a super political action committee supporting Trump, the Trump that was just convicted. Federal records show Adelson and her late husband, casino mogul Sheldon Adelson, gave nearly $100 million in 2020. She plans to give a similar level this cycle. But you have Mark Cuban bashing Trump, calling Trump a snake oil salesman, which could be true, but you just don't get to say it, especially as a billionaire, but really as somebody who just sold your team to his main donor so that you can then legalize gambling in Texas to sell it to po folk and particularly black po folk, as you know, as we know, let me say by studies and everything else, that the propensity is for black males to do it worse. Gambling. The sports gambling. It's in the studies. We went through it in the prior shows. But we got all kind of black folks betting on this that's going to celebrate this and watch every minute of every game next week. They said on, on, on the show the other night, they said the Allisons don't like to be seen. So then they would use Mark as a sort of Lady Eloise. Marcus. They ain't going to show themselves because they don't want you to see them. And it'd be the same person that's getting that medal from Trump. This is the article I was sharing about earlier, talking about earlier. I'm going to share a part of it. Let me get to a caller before I read it. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, I'm calling out to the bag, Tom. What's up? Can I read a little of this article to you, and then you can just come right in after the article. Give me your thoughts. Yes, sir. Mark Cuban's big wager on gambling in Texas faces long odds. In the Texas Senate, can the Mavs' new Las Vegas owners' deep pockets overcome conservative Texas senators' opposition to gambling? As far away as gambling seems, here it's also creeping also close. That's why Cuban is selling 70% chunk of the Mavs to casino owners and why Jones, meaning Jerry Jones, was an early investor in DraftKings. Oh, my God. Betting company and has long partnered with Oklahoma's Windstar Casino and Texas Lottery. For those people that don't know what I'm talking about, they're talking about this. Conflict of interest, Robert Kraft and Jerry Jones still own equity in DraftKings. Okay. I'm making sure you don't get lost. Jones recently said, I do play the lottery. I'm a big fan of what it brings for our state's education. This is how they sell it to particularly black folk. Each week, thousands of Texans take their money across the state lines. Hold on one second, caller. I'm going to keep you here. You still here. I'm going to bring you in right now. 
Each week, thousands of Texans take their money across state lines to gamble at casinos in Louisiana and Oklahoma. Turn on the TV and there's Troy Aikman starring in commercials for Chocolate Casino. Coming soon, similar as with Texas Rangers legend Pooj Rodriguez and Aikman's old teammate, pro football, football Hall of Famer Darren Woodson. I've said repeatedly there is little to no support for expanding gambling, Patrick said. This uh, we don't waste time on bills without over, overwhelming GOP support. Texas remains a red state. Against that daunting backdrop, Cuban and Jones are betting on Texas. Jones is fiscally red. Cuban, socially blue. What about fiscal? Both covered above all else green. Do they even do they, do they need even more financial and political oomph to twist Republican arms in Austin? Enter Adelson. Sands Corp. Casinos gambling top donor to trump who last year donated one million dollars to texas governor greg abbott in 2018 she received the presidential medal of freedom from donald trump caller what's caller are you there give me your thoughts on it let's see uh the jeffy uh Epstein thing that happened on Let me ask you. I'm not. Let me focus you. But no. But but this. Because because the, the thing that I want to we we don't get to like Trump. First of all, I don't. Ados don't. But what happens is black folks like what Roland did. I believe to Trillion is they accuse black folks of being Trumpers. This motherfucker then took the money. Where are you at for Mark Cuban? And I'm saying this to you. Let me ask you a very succinct question because I don't want you to get off. I want you to speak to this. How do you say that you hate Trump, then take this money from the Adelsons? That, that's my point. That, that's what I'm trying to say is that not particularly Trump, but the fact that he's able to put his so called political views, his personal political views aside in order to advance his agenda. So, what he doesn't have any feelings towards Trump. This bill is just towards. It's showing that he makes money. So whatever he says about Trump, it's Trump that is sending. So then, how do, so then answer this. So then let, let me ask you this. So when you're rolling and you letting him say all this stuff and talk about being liberal and all this liberal and against Trump stuff, what's your obligation to challenge him? into like a businessman. This is a man that's selling black media. He's selling journalism. Not a businessman, a slimy, not a businessman, a slimy, dishonest, manipulative person. Not a businessman. I'm not saying he's a businessman. I'm saying that he's a snake. All right. Look, I appreciate that, man. You made some stuff clear, but I'm, I'm going to keep going. My thing is this. What's happening now is there's a man who basically saying that he's anti-Trump is getting all the things he needs from being a Trumper through the people that he sold the majority stake into his team to. And ain't nobody saying enough because all they want to talk about is just those people. And they don't want to tie that to the NBA governors. And they don't want to tie that to Mark Cuban because what it means about they show and they journalism. And it ain't just Roman. 
So you can't come to me and say, well, he don't want to offend Mark Cuban. It's, I don't know, man. That's journalism. This journalism right here. I ain't even a journalist. And I got to do the journalism? It's time to do some offending. Oh, I talked about the Adelsons. But what about this gambling and Mark Cuban's push to put this in black homes? In poor people homes? I need you to see it. I want to talk about it. We let uh, Kyrie get Irving's Mavs contract includes $120 million guarantee. Oh, I like Kyrie. Somebody said that earlier. I bet you do. The NBA does not pay the money to the players, as I understand it. The NBA just governs over. There are separate teams. The Dallas Mavericks are now owned by the number one donor to Trump. And they also are owned by people that they're trying to push for gambling to be legal in Texas to further push this sports gambling across the nation that I think will lead to a crack like epidemic in black homes. And Kyrie Irving works for them. Now, people will say, what is he supposed to do? He got to figure that out. But right now, you don't get to champion him while he takes checks from them. And if you do, you just don't understand. Like the NFL, the NBA consists of individual teams that are owned by individuals or ownership groups. And in this case, it is owned, whether you like it or not, by the top donor to Trump. Mark Cuban looks to sell Dallas Mavericks to one of Trump's top donors for $3.5 billion. The lady that's putting this medal on. Understand from Trump. As the observer shows, it's so that he has a specific purpose to sway the far right in Texas to allow them to let him have gambling because he ain't really been donating to them. Can I get to it? And you got people that had him on a show. And don't want to bring that hammer because he is not Ados, and we all here with shoestrings and bubble gum. So you poke at us, but what about this dude, your friend or whoever? Boom, Mark Cuban isn't playing with any of you fools. Can we get to it? I'm not gonna keep you long. I'm going to get you right, though. Las Vegas Sands makes investment in online gambling company Huddle Tech. Las Vegas Sands completed a strategic investment in Huddle Tech on Thursday morning. This is back in March. Okay. Robert Kraft and Jerry Jones still own equity in DraftKings. So you had a comment by Simeon F. Trillions. Roland wants black voters to remain the mules of democracy. From that, Roland retweeted and said, another ADOS dude caping for Trump. He didn't say nothing about Trump, though. And he's not a Trump supporter. He's actually part of the ADOS Foundation. We're far left. The person that you have to ask, Roland, is this man. You're already a billionaire, but now you're tied into trying to sell us gambling, and the people you're using to do it are Trump's number one supporters. How are you not far right? Can we get to it? You got him with, with Kamala doing this picture. What about politics, though? Specific demands for Black Americans and Blacks at large, but African Americans, Adolf's folk. No, we don't do that. All right. Another Adolf's dude caping for Trump. Roland wants Black voters to remain the view mules of democracy. It don't say that, though. That's not how retweeting goes. I don't know if you're too old to know how to tweet, but this ain't how you retweet. It has to say that for you to retweet it. 
But you don't say this, though. White people don't like to think or talk about race. Mark Cuban gets candid about cap, NFL, race, and corporate diversity. He got him on the show looking. How about we bring the hammer to him? Come on over, Mark. I'll give it to you. I'll ask the questions. I'm not the, a journalist like, say, Roland. But I will ask you today, are you a far right supporter of Trump? And you will likely tell me you are not. And I will ask you, how are you not if you tied in with the Adelsons? And that's the question. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? It's Jay calling from St. Louis. Give me your take on it. I got a question, Tom. Do you think that this sports betting and gambling is now becoming more of a political issue that's being advertised to us where that'll sway us to want to vote a certain way or think of political parties a certain way if our states are able to endorse this voting, this betting? Well, anytime they try to sell something to you, and again, I, I've recommended going to watch Century of Self, the documentary that shows how they came up with department stores, how they started the use of putting celebrities next to presidents well before Obama, Woodrow Wilson was first to make them more acceptable and palatable to, to people. And you look at, at, at uh, lottery and how they sell it to you guys in the South. Again, young black folks in LA don't buy no goddamn lottery tickets. Not none that I've ever seen in my whole life. But they use that whole uh, education piece that Jerry Jones was talking about in the article before to sell y'all on that it's a good thing for your communities. So there is aspects of that. And I come back to why you see uh, the Club Shay Shay, the Joe Budden, the Gilbert Arenas. This is all part of the propagand propagandization of sports gambling being an acceptable element of your life. And I don't know. A lot of y'all got to figure it out because I think you got to get rid of sports. Like as because of what it's become post the 2018 Supreme Court decision. Give me give me your, your take on, on Mark Cuban, though basically trying to play liberal as a billionaire then also trying to sell trying to get gambling legalized but doing it also with trump's top supporter how does any of that make sense uh, it doesn't uh i think that he, he has to so much for calling that was a great call uh i just don't think that you guys should allow for it now i'm not advocating any violence but i definitely think you should be picking in this Dallas mavericks i think you should be bringing questions to Stephen a and to so many others on tv shannon sharp and asking why y'all not talking about this man being tied to the, the the first the dallas mavericks and the nba being tied to trump's top supporter and then also why is it in particular that Mark Cuban is not being tied into this as an owner also that's trying to legalize gambling in Texas. And how is that going to affect you as the black viewer that is oftentimes the main viewer for many of these people? I'm not saying that Stephen A. don't get some other people. They got him up there for a reason. I, I, I don't care that you see everybody lets them play this game. Like I let I, I help other black people speak too and get a voice. I don't care about one more black journalist helping with ESPN bets behind their shoulder. What I want to know about is the effect of your face on the community with ESPN bets behind your shoulder and why you doing it. I want to know why when this man comes on your show, you ain't asking the hard question. Are you a Trump supporter? 
And then if he answers no, ask him, well, then how did you sell to the uh, to the top Trump supporter, Miriam Adelson? And why? You knew she got the medal and all this, and you knew that her husband been donating to the, the right. But what the man posed is an issue that goes beyond just them. It goes all the way down to these players. Woke. They out here. I love Kyrie. He speak the truth. Well, now's the moment to speak the truth. What you going to say about the Adelsons being the top Trump supporter and you play for the team that's going on the championship and they got the Black Lives Matter they trying to do all around in the social justice. What you? What is this? What is this whole mess? What you, I ain't heard nothing about the gambling, Kyrie. The sports gambling. All right. I just want to talk. So you had Roland's tweets. Now, he did have a recent tweet where he talked about Adelson. But let me look. I don't see nothing about Cuban. The new owner of the Dallas Mavericks. Again, let me make it clear. Mark Cuban has retained, I believe, 27% of the team. So he's still tied in with them. The new owner of the Dallas Mavericks. No, the new owners that of the Dallas Mavericks that Mark Cuban sold to. The Mark Cuban I had on my show that I championed in multiple tweets. Plans to fund a major super PAC to help Donald Trump get elected in November. This is how billionaires try to control elections. But we can beat them with our votes. Let's make Miriam Adelson blow a bunch. Oh, hell yeah. Mark Cuban versus Elon Musk debating DEI diversity. Let me help. Let me find out who is taking bets. I put my money on Mark to dust his A. All right. This guy. Mark Cuban looking to sell Dallas Mavericks to one of Trump's top donors. Mark Cuban's big wager on gambling in Texas faces long odds. Can the Mavs new Las Vegas owners deep pockets overcome conservative senators' opposition to gambling? This person here. Billionaire man Allison plans to give millions to help Trump. That's who Roland's saying the guy tied to them is who Roland saying will dust Elon on diversity. Boom. Mark Cuban isn't playing with any of you fools. That includes Ted Cruz, Mark Davis, and anyone else. But you got time to misrepresent what a single black folk, a black person that's doing politics for ADOS, trying to bring a conference and so many, and OMB, you ask the census to get a, give us data, you got time to misrepresent them as a Trump. Uh -huh. For any of you that want to boycott me, markcuban.com is the best. Boom. All right. The same Roland that was wrong on reparations said that we could never talk about it. We could never make it real. Then got quiet. Mark Cuban Biden over Trump. Roland Martin show. When I searched him, Dallas Mavericks, I searched the Dallas Mavericks, Roland Martin, I didn't see no stories about that sale to the Adelsons. I saw this one where he's championing him right here. I want to talk. I just wanted to bring it to you because we in the new Hunger Games. May the odds forever be in your favor. This is Tone Talks. Please go to ToneTalks.net, subscribe, donate, and share. I just wanted to bring a discussion to you because I see a lot of people that are struggling with the basics of what's going on. We out.